This video tutorial will walk you through the process of beginning an application for CT paid leave benefits through the online portal. The first time you log into the online portal, you'll be asked to provide some personal information. You only need to provide this information the very first time you log in. Subsequently, when you log in, you'll be brought to the main dashboard. Your name will appear at the top of the screen, as well as in the upper right hand corner of the screen. If you click on the blue circle with your initials, you can navigate to personal details, notification preferences, and payment options. Any applications that you have already begun will show up under My Cases. You can see here that I have already created three different applications. All of my applications are in a pending status. Further down, you'll see a leave summary. You can see here that I have 6.45 weeks of time pending. That's based on the three claims I've already created. And I have 5.55 weeks remaining out of my 12 week allotment. If you would like to see the details of any particular case, you simply click on the case number and you will be brought to the detail screen. Let's go through the process of starting a new application. First, click on the blue Start a New Claim button. We need some information before we can proceed. I will need to know the first date of absence and my anticipated return to work date. It's fine to use an estimate if you're not sure of your return to work date. If you're applying for your own serious health condition or for caregiver leave to care for a family member, you'll also need your treating providers or your family members treating providers contact information. If you have this information, click Let's Get Started. Now we'll be brought through a series of questions. The first question is, are you enrolled with the CT Paid Leave Authority as a sole proprietor or a self-employed individual? If you are, click yes, otherwise click no. Now we need to enter the employer contact information. If you have more than one employer, click on the new entry button in order to add subsequent employers and information. When you're finished, click continue. Next, I have to select the reason for my paid leave request. In this case, I'm going to select your own injury or illness as the reason. You should only be requesting paid leave benefits if your work schedule is impacted. Once you make your selection, click on the green continue button. Please note that the questions that you will be asked uh, subsequently depend on the type of leave reason that you have selected. In this case, for my own serious health condition, I now need to indicate how I will be taking time off from work. I'm going to choose continuous, which means I'll be out of work for two or more consecutive days. I now need to enter some dates the start date of my leave, the end date of my leave, which again may be an estimate, what was or will be the last day that I worked, and what was or will be my first day absent. Once you enter those dates, click the continue button. Now I'm asked, what is the date that I need to begin my paid leave benefits? It's possible that you may need your paid leave benefits to begin the first day you're going to be absent. However, some employers will require their employees to use other benefits like paid time off prior to using paid leave. If this is the case, the date that you need your paid leave benefits to begin may not be the same as your first date of absence. You also need to answer yes or no to have you applied for any other income or benefits related to this paid leave. Click continue. Answer yes or no to the question, did your healthcare provider advise you to stop working on a specific date? If you select yes, you will have to enter what that date is.
You also need to answer yes or no to the question, is your absence related to COVID-19? And in the open text field, indicate what medical condition you are being treated for. Click continue. Now you can set your communication preferences. If you would like to change your communication preference, click the icon, the pencil icon, and select either US mail or email, and then click the save button. You'll see a green success notification letting you know that that change was successful. You can also elect if you would like to receive text messages about your claim. Again, use the pencil icon to either allow or change that to not allow text messages and click the save button. You'll again see the green success message. Click continue. Now you'll be asked for your preferred payment method. You can choose to receive your paid leave benefits either through direct deposit to your bank account or through a prepaid Visa debit card. If you select direct deposit, you will need your bank account information, including account number and routing number. If you select Visa debit card, you can simply make that selection and then click continue. Now you have the option to indicate if you would like any taxes withheld from your benefit payments. You can add either federal and or state withholding. To do that, simply click on the appropriate button. And when you're done with this section, click continue. Now you'll see a finalize and submit screen with some important information that you need to review. After you review the information, click continue. The next question asks, how did you hear about this program? Please select from the dropdown. And finally, you must attest that the information you have provided is true, correct, and complete. You do have to select yes in order to move forward with this process. You'll see a, a screen telling you it looks like we have all the information we need to submit your claim. Click on the continue button. Now your claim is being created. After your claim is created, you'll have the opportunity to upload documents and to look at your case details. You'll also be assigned a case manager who will contact you if needed after they review the information that you have provided. Please note that the process we have gone through is just the beginning of the claim application and your claim is not ready for review until you upload the required documentation. Now you're going to see a screen indicating that if you are seeking job protection for the duration of your absence, you will need to apply to your employer for federal and or state FMLA. Connecticut Paid Leave only provides income replacement for approved time away from work, but it does not provide job protected leave. Click the green continue button. If you would like, you can sign a medical authorization form that will allow AFLAC to communicate with your healthcare provider to gather information necessary to substantiate your claim. If you would like to sign that authorization now, you can click on the blue sign now button. When you're done with that, or if you choose not to do that, click the green continue button. Now you'll be brought to the document dashboard for this particular claim. You'll see that there are three different types of documentation that are needed in order for your case to be considered complete and ready for review. Identification, employment verification, and illness or injury certification. As of right now, all of these documents are still required. If you have any of these documents handy, you can click on the upload icon and upload them directly from this screen. If you don't have any documents, click on the continue button. What happens next? Now that the claim has been created, you will be assigned a case manager and you will also receive a welcome letter uh, either via email or postal mail based on your communication preferences with the forms and documents that you need to complete and return to AFLAC. The letter also contains the date by which these forms are due. If you need an extension of time, uh, you, you should contact AFLAC either by calling or sending a message through the portal to your case manager and let them know that you need an extension. If we click on the blue view case button, 
we'll be able to look at all the details related to this case that we've just created. We can see that this is for our own injury or illness, the case number, the case manager is currently uh, pending an assignment, and our leave type is a continuous absence. We see our key dates, and we see now that our leave summary has been updated. Remember, I had already created three other claims, so this leave summary has now been updated to add the time requested from this additional claim that I just created. Below that is the message section. You can send and receive messages with your case manager here. Click on the blue new message button in order to compose a message. And again, you can access your document dashboard here to upload the required documents. Underneath the case timeline, you'll see all the activities related to your case. From here, you can also access the uh, new claim notification letter, which was sent to your email or your postal address, again, is based on your communication preferences. If we open the letter, we'll see that it contains all of the information for our claim. And it also contains the due date by which we must return the required documents. There's specific information about what is acceptable in terms of um, required documentation, for example, for personal identification documentation. It's important to read all of the information contained in this document. And there are also pre-filled copies of the forms that are required with your name and case number. So in this circumstance, we have the certification for a serious health condition form, which we'll need to go to our healthcare provider to complete. And we also have the employment verification form, which we'll need to go to our employer. The healthcare provider and employer can return this to AFLAC directly by sending it to the email address indicated or the fax number indicated on the forms, or they can return it to you and you can upload it here into the document dashboard. Additionally, you'll want to note that there are certain forms that are required in order for your claim to be considered complete and ready for review. And there are also optional forms. Some of these we may have completed through the intake process, for example, the payment election and the withholding. There's also a third party authorization form. If you would like someone else to be able to communicate with AFLAC on your behalf, you'll need to fill that out as well. This completes our tutorial for how to file a claim using the online claims portal.